So, Torben, you just spent 412 days in prison hmm. in the United States, and you were able to offer updates occasionally, but what we haven't really heard is you describing in detail what it was like hmm. in the prison. Um, this is a drawing hmm. that a fellow inmate made of your cell. Yeah. Can you just hold that paper up and explain to us what your cell was, how you, yeah. what was your daily routine? The cell, uh, I spent more than a year in, in this one. Uh, the first month, the first 10 days was isolation in one like this. And then there was a month, almost a month in, uh, in a four man cell. And then around a year in this one. Uh, so it's my cell, B6N, uh, bond beds in one side. Uh, and then we have a shower, hot and cold water, four seconds, push, four seconds, push. And then we have a toilet and a sink and, and, and a mirror. It's like nine times 13 feet. So um, we, we could go out in the dorm when we are not in lockdown. And, um, but uh, I spent 22 hours per day in there also because most people spoke Spanish and there was a lot of noise outside and the TV was running in Spanish and, and the noise was, was very hard. Um, and uh, so I, I spent most time in my cell. Um, how, how was it to be in, in jail? Um, it was more than a year. And, and because of that, there was seasons of different things, of being traumatized, being in shock, but there was also beautiful seasons. Um, first of all, I've never been handcuffed before. I've never been arrested before. I've never been in a jail before. Uh, so just be getting handcuffs on was the first shock. Um, when I was put in isolation, it was like a bad movie. Uh, the only thing I've seen from a jail was in a movie, and it, it really looked like a movie where I was very colorless. The, the, the cell I was put in, it was nasty, mold on the ceiling, drawings, leftover underwear, leftover garbage. A thing mattress, and then you're just put in and close the door, and and I was there for ten days first, and and it was it was really really shocking, um, and and there in those ten days it was like a roller coaster, like of like crying, <laughs> being in shock, uh, praying. I got a Bible, kissing the Bible, hugging the Bible. And, and a lot of things happen in short days. It was very hard in the beginning. You have no papers to write with, no Bible, nothing to do, and you are just there. Uh, it was very cold uh, there where I was, so I actually slept in my jumpsuit. And I, I did not, even I took a shower every day, when I finally came out, the first thing they said was, you stink. That was the first comment, you stink. And like, but I've, I've taken a shower, but I've been sleeping and spending 10 days in the same clothes. Um, but then I was taken out from isolation and put into a dorm, and that was scary. That was, that was scary to be around a lot of criminal people, a lot of people who have committed murder, people who have been in jail for 20 years. And, and there was a fight almost starting as soon as I came because I was standing in line for the phone and then the phone was free and I grabbed the phone and wanted to call my wife and I found out that it was the black phone. And uh, the, the black people started to shout, why do he use our phone? And, and he should use the other phone, but the other phone was for the Spanish people. <laughs> Spanish people. And, and I stood there like, I'm white, I'm not Spanish, I'm not black, and, and what phone to use? And, and it was scary, and I, I just wanted to go back to isolation again. <laughs> I put me back in my cell, because to be around a lot of people there, it was scary. Um, and, and I would say the first month, it was unreal and like I was like convinced I should be out every day because I've done nothing wrong why am I not out and and it's, it's, it's a very it's very humiliating very humble experience uh, to the way you get the food 
to a hole in the door and just a brown bag and you take it in and two pieces of bread and a peanut butter and a jelly. And Apple, one day a week we got eggs, two eggs, and then we could change the eggs with other people. And, and then we sat there and with the peanut butter and jelly and, and all of that. And, um, and then the other food and it, it was hard. Um, and, and you don't sleep. There's just lot, you don't get a lot of sleep to turn off the, the light at, at 12.30, 1 o'clock. And then there is uh, the shout for medication with the people who have to have medis, medication at around 4, 4.30 and you wake up there. So, so that year, the most I got in one go was like four hours, four and a half hours. And, and then you try to sleep a little later and wake up. And it's just a different world. And, and, and when, I, when I've been there so long time, in a way, I, I was almost afraid to get out. It's weird to understand because I was like, I, I got used to, used to this routine used to this way of living and, and having my 9.13 feet and it was my world and, and I, I somehow felt home actually there and, and, uh, and I had my routine with my peanut butter and bread and, and I, I knew how things was going, I knew the program like, like um, Tuesday changed clothes uh, Friday changed clothes, Wednesday changed the, the blanket and, and when we could go out to wreck and I knew what was going on. There was no windows in, in, in the dorm, there was a window up, up in the ceiling but you could only see if it was the sun was shining, it was light or dark and then it was the same colorless walls and, and the same half depressed people who came in there, no one wanted to be there. And especially like birthdays and Christmas and Thanksgiving and New Year and, and all of that, everything was more heavy. But there was also a season where I, we saw God move. I did meetings, I did teaching, I, I wrote books. And so like many things happened outside in a year, many things happened inside during a year like that. But it was truly the hardest I've ever tried.